While on Thursday, August 16th, protesters turned up outside of the office of the Prime Minister in Sinclair to vent their outrage over a sari skit portrayed by the People's National Movement's Family Day. In the skit, supporters draped a yellow sari over a woman, which was then unraveled by men dressed in red gorilla costumes. The protesters were led by Pandit Satyanan Maharaj, and he's here to tell us more. Good morning and welcome. Hi, good morning, and good morning to your viewers as well. Well, my first question, you would have seen the clip that we showed earlier with the Prime Minister talking about uh, the entire experience for him. That, of course, being, as he said, a learning experience for him and the Mahabharata. What are your thoughts on that, first of all? Well, firstly, let me say that um, the the skit, the sari protest, as we like to term it, um, was a historic event in that as many times as Hindus have been wronged in this country, we've never come to Port of Spain to vent our frustration, uh, to let the powers that be know that we're upset about it. And uh, to really understand where it has come to this point where on Sunday night, was it Saturday night, the Prime Minister apologized unreservedly to the Hindu community. Um, the genesis of what happened is, is incredibly important in that the skit was portrayed, it was carried in uh, mass media, um, and uh, it incensed quite a lot of Hindu women, the sari being a Hindu woman's wear, and worn more so at and on the occasion of religious functions. And so they felt that denuding and disrobing um, a woman had undertones that bore a resemblance to the denuding and the disrobing of Draupadi, which is, uh, as you said, um, a scene that takes, uh, takes, part, uh, takes place in the Mahabharat. What I want to emphasize is that this protest came from the mothers and the sisters and daughters themselves. This is important, that they were so incensed that they wanted to do more than make um, comments on social media or see comments in mass media. They wanted to say something uh, to the Prime Minister. And, and I, all of Monday, um, calls keep, keep coming in. Keep, uh, they kept coming. And so I felt that we should have done more. And they agreed that, listen, if you call for it, we will come. We will come. And answering that call as well was the leader of the opposition, who, is, um, who saw it as a gender issue. Uh, apart from a religious issue. You could not get away from the religious issue. In fact, the Prime Minister himself admitted that it was offensive to Hinduism. While we accept, and I think it's important to accept the apology of the Prime Minister, I think it is equally important to, um, for us to, to look at him with a sort of cokey eye kind of view. Because here you are, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, admittedly, you came from Tobago, and so we buy the fact that you, you saw very few Hindus in Tobago, even as uh, uh, today, it's probably not as bad as it was, because the Prime Minister is, what, 70-something, I think, now. But he has lived 50-something years in Trinidad. And to feel, or to, while he may not have known the page by page and word by word of the scripture, the scripture I'm sure that he would have been around enough Hindus, I'm hoping, I hope not, that he that he that he would have been a wrong people to understand that the sari is sacred wear. And while some would say it's a national, it, it's, a, it's an international dress, it's not really that. Sari is worn by Hindu women in Trinidad and Tobago on the occasion of puja, prayer, ramayana, weddings. How different would it have been if it was not a sari, if it was a dress? Because, I mean, I'm not a Hindu, but I wear sari sometimes. That's right, yeah. And... How different would it have been? It would have not. It would not have had the religious tone that it took, but it would have still be offensive in that denuding a woman really speaks to us of a culture of rape, and we know that in the Caribbean, we know that in Trinidad. In fact, if my numbers are correct, as of last week, Thursday, there were one thousand four hundred eighty-four reports. That's reports. That's, that's not what was reported. That's, that's what was reported of violence against women in this country for this year only. And that says a lot about us as a society. And the message he was sending, and I don't want to get away, it's not like it happened, he apologized, and that's it. It happened. It took six days 
a cabinet meeting, a cancelled a post-cabinet conference, and a political meeting for him to apologize. So it took all that time. And while we are grateful and we are thankful for the apology, we must bear in mind, and, and this is a, a scenario that I would, would quote for you. If a man beats his wife, as the PNM has beaten down on the Hindu community time after time after time, and then after many, many years, says, I'm sorry, how much weight does that sorry really carry? Unless now that sorry is the beginning of a change in behavior, the beginning of a change in attitude, a beginning in a change on how we as a community are viewed. But quite apart from all of this, and while the sari cannot be separated from a woman, nor a woman from her sari, as we have learned, and the Prime Minister has learned a very hard lesson, there is still the issue of gender. There is still the issue of violence against women that the Prime Minister did not apologize for. And it's interesting that while he thanks Satmaraj of the Mahasabha for uh, giving him advice on the uh, in, in the sense that it is uh, pointing out it was a gender issue, the Prime Minister apologizes for it being a religious issue and skirts the whole gender issue altogether. So up to now, the Prime Minister has not apologized to the women in Dan Tobago because he has had a history of language that demeans women. As Prime Minister, not just outside of his not just in his private capacity, but in, as a prime minister. And we want to call upon him to go that extra step and call for an apology to the women of Trinidad and Tobago. And while we accept his apology graciously, we will look at him and his party and uh, all, I think, who would seek to demean us as a group, who would seek to bring us down, who would seek to belittle us, who would seek to make us feel less than citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. But I still feel that the wing is still open and that he has not gone that extra distance in apologizing to our mothers, our sisters, and our daughters, because had it not been a sorry, it would have been equally offensive. Now, in our closing two minutes, so the Prime Minister said it was a learning experience for him, and there are many, I'm sure, in our community who are not really familiar with these stories in the Mahab. The only reason I knew mm -hmm. is because as a child, I remember seeing it on television. That's there right, was yeah. a, a movie and, and they showed the mm -hmm. woman being unrobed and that sort of thing. That's the only reason I knew. But I'm sure there are many, even Hindus, young Hindus, who perhaps don't even know that story. What are your thoughts on well, that? I, 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 I think that the, uh, the story is well known within the Hindu community. Okay. And for most of the time, I mean, our Prime Minister got an education in the PNM government. Huh? something we have to realize and remember. And uh, he is the leader of the PNM. And for, for, I think in the same, this, the same clip that we had, he says that we cover every centimeter of Trinidad and Tobago. So how can you uh, propose to govern a people that you really don't know? You know, I'm not a politician, and I will leave that for the politicians to pick up on. Uh, but the Prime Minister, I mean, it's na naked politicking. He has an, a, an internal election to face. He has a general election. The three years are coming up. Um, his, he, he, he's not going to walk away from this smelling like a rose. And we're not going to allow him to do that because um, the offense was committed. And sorry are words, and unless those words are backed up by policy and action, then his words really and his apology really will, will, will mean nothing in, in a few days' time. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Pandit Maharaj. It's been a, a pleasure. pleasure chatting with you. Uh, of course, we've been chatting with the spiritual head, Satya Anand Ashram. We take a short break for the news. Stay tuned. <laughs>